Right, it's nine o'clock in the morning here, just gone. Uh, I'd say we're here at Beaver Farm today. Came down yesterday for a quick recce just to see how the lakes have been producing lately. Uh, we had a chat with Chris the bailiff, couldn't be more helpful. Um, like, how, how did you find it was this morning? Uh, it's just literally, I've never had a welcome like it. We're actually the only people on the lakes today, which is a, a bit of a handy point. But Chris came and met us at the, uh, the bailiff's office at the front. He was just doing a couple of rounds when we got in. Uh, brought us straight to the lake, and literally did a whole circuit of the lake. I mean, you don't need a marker rod when you've got a bay leaf like that with you. It knows the, the whole lake, inch by inch, can tell us exactly what was on the bottom. With deep seal, medium seal, gravel bar, the depths, the features around the island, what the hotspots were, the baits used in those hotspots. I mean, we couldn't be more prepared, to be honest with you. It's, it's brilliant. It's really set the standard for me for a, yeah. for a fishery. Uh, definitely. Um, like, like I said, it's been very helpful. It's pointing us in the right direction in terms of bait. We knew it being a speci lake and carp going up to 48 in here. Uh, obviously last caught a couple of years ago at 45, um, that it is predominantly a boily lake. Doesn't mean to say that the other, the particle end of stuff doesn't work as well, but there is a few, bre there are a few bream in here, in which case we don't really want to be turned by them, especially as we get our rods in tonight. Um, we don't really want that to happen. So hopefully throughout today, um, I'm going to be fishing just a single one on cell, just out on the island. Uh, about two foot off the island, which Chris says is a great spot. And also, we had a walk around um, about a half hour ago, yeah, something like that, just like with Chris. Uh, and he's pointed out that the corners really do get active in here throughout the day, particularly in the morning. So fingers crossed, uh, we should have something to show you in the next few hours or so. Yeah, hopefully. I mean, like we said, big fish in here. Really, I look forward to it. I'm doing very similar tactics to Matt, to be honest. I've got one on a pop up in the margins. Uh, that's just because it is a silty area down there. It is thick silt here. You can really feel the leg getting stuck in it. But a couple of inches on a pop up, I've got a milk it off from mainline. That will sit nicely. And I've got a nice snowman with a plum pop up on top of a silt boilie close to the island. Hopefully, we'll have a fish for you soon. Um, if not, we'll be popping in throughout the day to talk about tactics and tips. And uh, yeah, nice one. We'll see you yeah. soon. Take you for a, a bait mix now. This isn't actually a spod mix because uh, we're usually going to be using this to bait the margins. I had a chat with a bloke here yesterday who came down early actually, and um, he actually had a, a 33 pound mirror out from the margins. He uses this tactic and he fishes it all the time and highly recommends it. Just pick about six or seven spots around probably half of the lake and slowly throughout the day trickle the bait in and then walk around the stalking rod and just lightly put a bait in and he said you'll get a bite every time so something we're going to be doing a lot today. Yeah. In, the, in the winter it's quite key not to overfeed. Um, obviously we we appreciate that the carp aren't feeding as much as they have been uh, and they do in the warmer months but we're hoping just by trickling it in the margins that, that we can hopefully get that, that little bite and more opportunistic fishing rather than kind of just camping behind the rods uh, which unfortunately see a lot of carpers do but we're not here to do today. Right so we're going to take you everything we've got. We've got a load of bait here. This just gives us, we feel, maximum attraction and maximum food. Everything we've got in here is in here for a reason. Whether that be a hook bait option, uh, an attractor, a feeder, anything. We've got it all here. We're here for three days. We can build up a nice bait layer on the bottom. Like I said, slow but often, really get the carp feeding it, getting confident and most likely to make a mistake. We'll start with the ground bait we're using. Uh, we're using Crazy Bait by Census, and it's actually the uh, black mustard and squid flavour we've got here today. I've never actually used this one myself but we're using a, a sort of muscle fishy uh, smell throughout the whole ground bait. So might as well keep it up to the, the whole mix. So that's going to put about half the packet in there. We're really going to bulk the mix out and help dry it out a bit. So we've got about half the packet in there. It does stink, I can tell you that. It really does got to smell, it really does smell. Next, I like to add the pellets. It's just me personally. It's just how I do it. I like to add my dry mix together. I get all that mixed in well before I add the wet stuff. Uh, finishing off a pack of Halibut pellets I've got from Bait Tech. I've got a whole pack of three mil. This is about, I don't know, a third of the pack maybe left. Yeah, it's quite important not to put too many pellets in, um, especially if they've got a high oil content. Obviously, it being colder, the oil doesn't break down like it does in the warmer months, uh, and it could lead to a less effective uh, baiting method. So once you've got all them in there, you're just going to stir them around so they're all mixed in nice there. Looking really good and it stinks. This census ground bait really does smell. Also, again from Bait Tech, a 12mm version. These are pre drilled. I'm just literally going to add a couple of handfuls in here 
And this is just going to give us an excellent baiting option when we want to. All we have to do, literally, like that, is pick the pellets out and add them onto our, uh, onto our hair if we want to use them as a baiting option. Adding the different size pellets as well really does confuse the car. What you've got to remember is your, uh, your hook bait is going to behave differently from the free offerings. And why is that you, why is that you just put in there? That is a sticky bait blood one. Another flavour going in there. I think it's 3 mil again, is it? Yep, it's 3 mil. Uh, so blood worm extract pellet. Again, just something different. So like you saw there, I literally just put a handful in. We've already got the bulk of the pellet from the bait tech pellets. So this blood worm is just a different flavour in there, different bit of colour as well. A bit of red to go with that black and brown at the moment. Next we're going to add our boilies. We've got two types of boilies here today. We've got the cell, which you've seen us use loads of times. Uh, they're in freezer bags because we defrosted them last night. And these are the uh, new Naturades, the new uh, black frozen monster squid uh, versions. Never used these before, but we're going to give them a go. We're going to actually combine the two pellets, um, uh, two pellets, two boilies, sorry. Reason being, again, hook bait options. One of us has luck on one of them, both switch to them. There are some monster cats in this lake, as we have talked about. So I don't know, maybe they might go for the monster squid version, we'll see. Uh, it certainly, oh, they, they stink. It certainly like suits the, the fishy mix we're, we're aiming to make at the moment. Um, obviously, Cell uh, is renowned for being a good high quality bait by Mainline. Uh, we've also got some new grange of us as well, uh, which we may, may switch up to later, just depending on how they're going. Now I'm going to crush these cell up. Um, only a handful or so have crushed the cell in there. They're going to crush some of the monster squid in there as well. Uh, we're going to leave a few whole and a few halves. Uh, so really just, just mixing it up. So nothing too much, just, just a bit broken. Just going in there, just to try and release those flavours. Again, like I said, this is the different size options. Matt, do you want to crush up some uh, screw as well? Yeah. It gives us different hook options all the time. That's what you were thinking about. Carp are going to eat your food because they think it's a free offering. So you can just give yourself as many options as you can. And I just love the look of this mix in the moment. That's absolutely stunning. Okay. All mixed in nice. You see we buy products from a number of brands, but we don't just stick to one thing, we think plenty of people make good products, we just have to use it. Um, last, right now we might go to the slightly more moist stuff. We're going to start with a whole tub of the good old hemp seed. Everyone knows this stuff is an absolute killer. This is a frenzied hemp seed with spicy chilli inside. Everyone knows chilli, everyone knows hemp seed works. We have a whole tin of that in. Juices and all. Yeah, everything. We soak it in there. However long this has been made. Oh, the smell that comes out of that as soon as you open it. There are a large head of bream and tension here as well. So if they get on this, then the carp is soon to follow. Whole tin there. Quite reasonable price as well for that. Only three pound fifteen for that tin. I think it's quite important to say that the hook baits we're using though um, aren't for the smaller fish. Obviously, we're after carp here. Uh, don't get me wrong. We may put it to a cat. Who knows? Um, but we're certainly not after the, the tension, the bream that are in it. Um, obviously the particle are an attractive for them, but the size hook baits we've got on, uh, the 16 mils, etc., should act as a slight deterrent for them, just so that they don't annoy us throughout the session we're here for. Definitely. Now we're going to the tuna. If you've ever watched a DVD by Cold or anyone like that, you'll see they bang on about this so much. And let's be honest, they speak the truth. If you ever went to the sea with a little bit of tuna on your hand, uh, around the coral or something like that, you'll see fish flood to you to get that tuna. They love it. This, all, all the oil, this is actually in sunflower oil. Uh, probably won't put all the oil in there just because, like we said, the oil in the water content. But all the tuna's going in there and it's just going to add an absolutely lovely smell and really, really, it's going to complement what we've got going on. So that all goes in there. Don't be afraid to use your hands. When I see people faffing about and they want to get their hands dirty, you're fishing, sort of get over it, you can wash your hands, but the keys get it all mixed. Really get that mixed around there. At the moment, I don't know if you can see that, we've got nice consistency going, quite moist, um, but like you say, it's high in attractants, which is what we're after it. Oh, next, anchovies. These stuff absolutely reek. I don't know if you ever smelt them, but they really have got a stench. And the oil of them is going to go in as well. Really adding in all the flavour we can. I'm just going to break these anchovies up as best I can, uh, just uh, around half an inch or so. Just so we've got more of it going on in that mix so that we've got a good dispersion going with all the areas we're baiting up in. Next, good old faithful sweet corn. I don't think anyone's ever been fishing without a tin of this stuff. Brilliant, as we all know, it adds a nice visual element to the mix. It's quite dark at the moment, a bit of colour in it, really get the cart's attention. Again, hook bait options. 
myself, like a lot of people I know, like to tip their boilies or even their pellets with a bit of fake sweet corn just to give it some buoyancy maybe or to give it an extra thing. This, great, everyone uses it, all that in there. Notice we're only using a small tip. Um, we don't really want to put too much sweet corn in in case it may act as a, a visual deterrent. Uh, obviously we're not sure what they're tuned into at the moment. Um, like I said, we've had a word with the bailiff. We know that they've been coming out on corn, not thick and fast as such. Obviously this is a speci lake, so there it is that bit harder. Um, but yeah, just making sure that we don't put too much corn in, just in case they're not after high this stuff today. And finally from the bait front, pepperoni. Everyone loves this stuff. I always get the, the pepperoni hot version. It just stinks, I actually love it. Makes me hungry smelling it. We've only got one stick chopped up here. Again, this is a hook ray option. If I want to put some of this on, I'll get it out of the mix itself because that's been soaking the juices, and I'll, I'll use that. It runs along with the tuna that we've got in the hemp as well. Now, there's two last ingredients that we're going to do. I'll finish up the wet stuff first. We've got in here some liquid green lip mussel. This is the stuff I was talking about in our first episode that we had at Gabriel's. Um, Oily hands, try and make getting these caps off a bit of a nightmare. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Run cap, but fair enough. Um, not putting too much in, gonna put about just under a quarter of a bottle in. Uh, obviously, because it's so fishy in there at the moment, we don't really want to overpower it. Um, just a little drop in there, a little bit more, and I think that's fine. Very concentrated, this stuff. So you, well, you get the smell of that, really strong. Really don't want to put too much in, because it is that concentrated. He's really starting to smell good. Final ingredient. Uh, we're going to put some salt in here. Okay, everyone goes on about salt. Uh, all said it's going to be a great thing. Nash says it, Kevin Nash. All the quarter boys say it. We're not going to put too much in. Um, we don't want to overpower the, the saltiness of the water. Just enough to complement the bait. Um, yeah, so we're going to put this in now. There we go. Nice yeah. level of salt in there. That finishes up what we've got. You've seen all those products that have gone in there, all the bait options, all the attractant. Hopefully we're going to get carp coming around the margins, hunting out for this stuff. Yeah. And there, when they come, we'll be able to see it, and that'll be when we lay our traps. We're getting a nice close up now, so bear with us. It's exactly how this looks. Bit final mix, looking absolutely gorgeous as well. Stinks. You often hear some carp programs, you wish you had smell vision That stuff reeks. Hopefully it's going to get the fish in a frenzy. Nice one. Right, it's half past five in the evening now, uh, day one. Unfortunately, we've had nothing. No. However, we have seen a lot of bubbling. Uh, and like we said previously, Chris was really helpful to Bailiff in telling us every spot that's worth a fish. Uh, we've seen the bubbles. Uh, we've seen where the fish have been pulled out from lately. We've got baits on them at the moment. We've been told to keep tight onto the islands if we can, which we have. I've got mine a couple of feet out, the same with Chris. Got nice hard bottoms there, so the bailiff informs us, and we can also feel it with our leads anyway from our cast. Definitely. Uh, I've got one out on pop up, and I've got one out uh, just to the left of where I'm fishing, uh, just in the corner, tight to another island, only a small island, about a couple of meters or so diameter, um, and I've got a, a single pop up out in there as well. Short hook limps, hook length, should I say? Um, yeah, just going to see see how it does tonight. Say so we've got another night after today anyway, but it would be nice to get some activity going, and at least we've found out. The, the good swims to stay in. Definitely. Uh, although we've not caught anything, like we have learned a lot today. It's uh, like we said, specimen lake, probably one of the hardest lakes in the complex, if not the hardest. Yeah, I'd say it's the With big fish all round. It's not going to be an easy lake. So, really used our time today wisely. I think we've moved, we've walked around the lake countless times. I mean, there's been fish just sitting in the margins, and I'm talking 20 plus pound fish. See them clear as day, but as soon as you get within 20 feet of them, they're gone. They really are quite wary fish. I think not wary, but aware well, of this, you being there. This I lake's say. been here over 20 years now. So. Yeah, they, they know every trick on the book, should we say. Um, I'm going to try and use tonight as a learning experience with the aim of being tomorrow night, being my most productive night. I've got both of them fished up close to the island. The right rod, I've not pummeted the bait in, but I've put a good, a good amount in. I'd say about four or five handfuls uh, of that bait you made us, you saw us make up earlier, the mix, as well as I'd say probably about 20 to 30 free boilers, which for this time of year, that's a lot of bait. Now I'm going to see if that works off for me tonight, it might not, but if it doesn't I'll learn not to do it again on this lake. Uh, on the left hand however, I've just got a pop-up, or yeah my left hand's a pop-up, uh, with just literally 
five to ten loose sail within a, a car width area, whereas my right hand rod I've got the snowman with the bait formation. So I think we should definitely learn something tonight of what the fish want. Yeah, I think what the bailiff said as well is quite a, quite a good and valid point. Was that it's Monday today? Uh, obviously, day ticket fisheries like such as this do see a lot of pressure of a weekend as opposed to the midweek fishing. So he he did make a, a good point yeah, in definitely. saying that bait will have gone in over the weekend in the spots that we're on. Uh, or likely to anyhow. Uh, people yeah. have been fishing the pegs we're on now uh, and they're likely to have gone in the same kind of spots we are. In which case, if they have plummeted the bait in, us being a bit more lenient on the bait and putting in just little and every now and again might pay off for us. Again, tonight is a learning curve, but hopefully we won't need to learn too much more. Yeah, like we said, uh, like Matt just said, uh, venues like this, especially a good lake like this, will get actually pummeled over the weekend. And it can sometimes take a day or two for a, for a lake to recover from something like that, especially if it's been the pressure on the fishery there might have been with a hot weekend like we've just had. I mean, temperatures were 15 degrees plus for February, you get a lot of fishermen out. So I didn't expect the action to be too vibrant today. I thought the lake might take a day or two to settle it down. But hopefully, if the temperature picks up and actually get some sunlight on the lake, the temperature will be warm today, but the lake's still pretty cold because it's been cloud cover. But if in the morning we wake up, there's a nice ray of sunshine coming on, warming the water, the lake's already had a day to recover from all the pressure at the weekend. Hopefully I can see it's getting good in the morning. Yeah, this afternoon it, it did warm up a bit. What do you reckon it hit about 14, something like that? Yeah, 12, Not, 14. Yeah, degrees. something like that. Probably 12 to be honest. It, it wasn't as warm as it's meant to be. Um, but one of the main points is I just fired out some uh, dog biscuits just on the surface, some floaters, just to see how it would get on. Loads of little fish were going for them, but eventually they did all go, in which case there must have been some bigger ones coming along. Now, I had my eye on them, but obviously when my back was turned, they, they must have been eaten. But I did put a zig out. I say it's about five foot here, so I had a zig about three foot in the water, something like that, um, just with a, a, a buoyant artificial hook bait, like an artificial black pellet. Now, fortunately, to no luck, but like we said, if it's warmer tomorrow, I think we're definitely going to have to be bang on the zigs and, and yeah. hopefully get them up towards the upper layers where just, they just should not, be hanging not out. Not scared of trying stuff, really. I think like the fish, like I said, 25 years, they've seen it all. So really, don't worry what we do. They're going to have seen it before. Um, try something different to catch them out, maybe. Bailiff maybe went, mentioned uh, maybe washing the baits out, sort of give them the look of safety, like the baits washed out, it's been in the lake a while, uh, can make the fish feel more comfortable, think it's not a threat. Um, but yeah, we'll see, uh, confident, something might happen tonight, if it does, we'll see how night filming goes, we don't have to do that yet. But um, I'm, I'm excited, shall we say, but for tomorrow's prospect. Yeah, I, I've opted for the brighter hook baits, I've got a, a mainline pop-up through Teller, uh, bright purple in colour, just single in the corner. And I've also got uh, the monster squid, uh, which is black actually. So obviously it's not bright, but it is tipped off with a, a milky toffee chopped down mainline pop up. In which case, I, if it doesn't work tonight, then tomorrow I'm going to switch and go to the bottom bait, so one and bottom, one and pop up, and kind of dim them down so they're not as bright. So it's all a learning curve, but hopefully we should be able to tune in in the morning with some activity that we've had during the night. Hopefully, so we'll see you soon, maybe in the night, maybe in the morning. Uh, unfortunately we had nothing in the night but like I said speaking to the bait yesterday he highlighted a few points which might be worth fishing should last night have been non-productive which it was. Uh, there's a, a hard patch running from this willow over here uh, straight to the island. Um, it's not too wide, I'd say a couple of metres or so, maybe even less than that. Um, very light silt, uh, it's considerably harder than the rest of the lake. Uh, I've been out there, I've had a heavy lead, just had a play around, found a spot I like. So I'm going to cast straight out and then I'm going to show you how to the lay line and how important it is in the fishing. There we go, spot on the money there. I'm just going to reel in very slightly just so I can feel that it's not in that hard silk patch. It's not. Great. I'm just going to set the hook link up. Well, actually, I mean, I'm going to set the hook link inside it. I haven't quite found that far. There we go, much better. Well, all I'm going to do now is have the rod tip in the water, tighten the line up. I'm going to put my bait runner on. The lower, so the rod tip touches the bottom of the water, bottom of the lake. 
really pay off a lot of slack line. The purpose of this is just to make sure that the line is laying flat on the bed of the river, uh, on the bed of the lake. This being a, a spessy lake, really don't want the, the carp to be spooked. If they see a line coming through straight to the lid, could be game over for us and it could be a wasted session. So we want to maximise our chances and opportunity we've got here. Yeah, I'm going to leave that for 15, 20 minutes or so. If the line's tightened up, which I dare say it will do, I'm going to play off a bit more slack until I eventually put my bobbin on. And yeah, fingers crossed, it should be good. As Matt just said, it's been a bit of a quiet night. Um, we didn't get any fish. I did have a couple of bleeps on my rods, just, just single little bleeps, clearly line bites or something. Uh, this morning, I did have a little run on my right rod. I uh, struck into it after a, a series of successful beeps, but nothing on there. Uh, I am hopeful though of that rod. That's the one that I baited more heavily. Uh, I think maybe it's taking the fish a little while to get onto the bait, just thinning it down. Uh, I'm actually gonna keep that rod out there for the whole day, I think. Maybe adding a few more boilies. Taking a bit of uh, advice from the bailiff, and he suggested maybe washing the baits out in uh, lake water, just to make uh, the baits look more safe to the fish, make them think they've been there for a while. So I've actually got a whole bucket here full of cell, just soaking. These have gone really pale, as uh, I think you can see there. Proper pale, nice and washed out look, so maybe the uh, fish think they're safer. We'll fight them over there around my hook bait in a minute. That's just on the snow snowman rig. I'm gonna pull in my left, uh, left rod. Uh, this one's had a pop-up on it. I did see a fish jump over the spot about two hours ago, but absolutely nothing. It's been quiet all night over there. So I'm actually gonna use that as my roaming rod today. I'm literally gonna make up a bucket of mix, like use the leftovers from yesterday and make up a bit more, and just walk around the whole lake. Just really gonna work for the fish this morning. Uh, I really wanna catch fish out of here. It's a hard lake, tough specimen lake, with some lovely fish. And I'm really determined to make sure that I do everything I can to snare one of them. So I'm gonna walk around, feeding up the margins just like I did yesterday, but really concentrating on being visual, uh, getting the fish feeding first conflict before I lower a bait in. Uh, yesterday I concentrated a lot on boilies as well. I'm actually going to switch my roving rod to maybe a pellet with a float a bit of corn on top, just to entice a bite, even if it's a bream or something, just let me know there's fish down there. Uh, so I'm going to be doing that most of the day, I think, really putting the effort in. As it's been said many times, effort equals success. So I'm going to make sure I put maximum effort in today and try and earn my fish. Um, hopefully we'll be seeing you soon. Nice one. There we go, cracking, cracking common. It's about what, one in the morning now? Really is a fantastic common. Uh, now they're just off the island, uh, just fishing a single cell. Fantastic stuff, can't be happy enough. Say so this is the last night we're here now, and this really is cracking carp. Let's hope we have more in the night. Nice one. And there we go. Another one, literally an hour later. This is top scale at 12 pound, 10 ounce. So not as big as the last, but still beautifully scaled. Got a slight bit of damage, don't know if you can see, just here by my thumb. I say it's very poor light, so you might not be able to see that. So we're gonna get some carp care kit on that, just to make sure that it's got the best chance of fighting that infection. To be honest, it looks like it might have had a scrap with one of the cats that's in it, or might have just caught it on something that's slightly hard. Uh, either way, cracking stuff again, this is on a cell, single cell tipped with just a fake maggot as a hair stop. Yeah, look at that. Nice one. Had a cracking 20 pound two ounce common last night. Really was a beautiful carp. Just totally sums up the good head of fish that they've got here at Beaver Farm Fishery. Um, now we're just gonna go for a rundown of the rig I pulled it on. Um, like I said, I was fishing a single cell tipped with uh, an artificial maggot. I uh, ran out of cell, so I've just popped a, a mainline through teller on it just for, this is a pop-up, but obviously it was a bottom bait I was using, but just for argument's sake, just to show you the, the rig mechanics and how it works. To start off with, uh, I stripped 13 inches of the Kristen Dark Mantis. So this is the 15 pound, this one. Um, obviously just use my quarter stripper just to strip it off. 
um, stripped about five inches or so. Uh, did an overhand knot just to tie a short hair. Then proceeded with the, the knotless knot, as you can see here, just on the hook. And the hooks I'm using are the curved shanks from Corda. Now these are the barbed version, so obviously if you're fishing a fishery like this where barbed hooks are not allowed, just make sure uh, that you, you crash them down with a good pair of pliers and that they are a, a barbless hook. Obviously I proceeded with, I'd say about 12 to 13 whippings, quite high up, but I really wanted it just on that bend if you can see there. Really wanted it to be presented well and I wanted it far enough from the hook not to spook the fish. So I proceeded with my whippings down, I've come back through the, the curved end there and as you can see I've just attached a quarter sinker just on there as well and I've surrounded that with the, just a small part of Kristen heavy duty putty just to really weigh the line down so I know I've got good line lay. As I said this is 12 inches now so I cut 13 off but obviously you always have a little bit over uh, and all I've done on the end there if you can see it's just exactly the same as I did with the hair just a double overhand knot pulled it tight cut the excess and that way I've got a quick link on my just off of my lead on my lead clip system uh, there's quite a few quite a few uh, snags here so I've always quite important to use the lead clip system uh, this just attaches to the quick link and there we go that's all there is to it um, just before casting we know that New Grange worked here well, so I thought sell New Grange, they're prestigious baits. So I just had the hook enhancement by Mainline. This is a New Grange version. Uh, just had it soaking in there, say five, 10 minutes or so. I have had some soaking in here for a month or so, uh, but unfortunately I forgot to use those, if I'm being honest. Uh, they're the pop-ups that I've got in there, the Frutella pop-ups. Um, I've got one on there now, but last night I'd say that was on a single cell, and it was tipped with the maggot as a hair stop, as you can see. So yeah, that's all there was to it. Really simple rig, but I think in fisheries it is really important. Simple but effective. It did the job last night and I dare say it will do it again. Right, it's just got 11 o'clock now. Um, morning, after night, before so to speak. We've obviously seen the fish mats had and the rigs that he used to catch them on. Uh, we've actually just packed away, haven't we? We've just got yep, the bivvies down, just nice slow pack away. Uh, yeah, so the bivvies are all down now. Uh, tactics for today, um, I've already had a walk around this lake and Tuscany, which is the lake next to us, that goes to 20 foot with a, even bigger cats in there. Uh, and the carp are still big, like in your 40s, etc. Um, seen a, a shoal over there of carp, I'd say mid doubles upwards, mid doubles to mid 20s. Um, there's about seven or eight of them. I fired some dog misses out this morning when I first noticed them. Uh, now they've all gone. Now the goals could have come around, they could have had them. But at the same time, I walked around again just a moment ago, just on the way back from picking the camera back up from charge from the bailiff's office, and noticed that three or four of them are still around, but just moved around the bay. So what we're going to do is going to pack everything away. We're going to basically kiss goodbye to the static session we've had to an extent. Um, and we're really just going to be as mobile as possible. We're going to go around with one rod, uh, a bank stick, no bite alarms or anything like that. Um, don't need it. We're just going to do some stalking and hopefully we'll have something to show you on camera. Uh, obviously we can't promise anything. One thing we have noticed here, they're very wary carp. You do find that on the Specy Lakes that you can be within eight feet of them and one foot more and they're spooked and they just will not come back for a good hour or so. Yeah. So it really is important to kind of keep the Polaroids on, spot them first and just kind of keep your distance and be as stealthy as possible. I think that's a tactic. We, we've got a couple of loaves of bread with us. Now we don't usually use bread, but they're so high up in the water at the moment. I say it goes to 20 foot in there. Uh, obviously it's shallower in the margins, uh, but they're just, I'd say about a foot below the, the surface. Uh, like I said, the, the biscuits have been fired out. They could have taken and they might not have, might have been the seagulls. Um, but we, we're going to approach that method. We're going to free line it and just put some bread on the hook, just a small flake, uh, chuckle a few bits out. Uh, and kind of see what comes from there. I've got some dog biscuits with me as well, uh, and I've also got some long zigs that I can attach if need be. Um, obviously, I'm gonna have to plumb it and see how deep it is first. Maybe have a word with the bailiff, because we don't really know too much about Tuscany Lake, but the, the fish are there to fish for. Um, so yeah, it's whether our methods are, are appropriate or not. Definitely we'll have well, to wait and see. We, do, like, we haven't had too much action during the day, as you've seen, we've been here, so it makes sense to, to go to the fish. 
Uh, we'll probably do it for an hour or two. Like, look, uh, both lakes, good, good walk around, good look. And the uh, <laughs> reason we're laughing, a Robin just landed on top of the camera. He's been cheeky all, uh, all day, coming to say hello. But anyway, yeah, we hope for this morning. I think we've not a tactic we do too often, but something I think every carp I should be prepared to do really go and find those fish and, and change his methods up. Definitely. Um, say the, the 30 the guy pulled out on Sunday when we were down here doing the recce just to kind of have a look at the lake. Um, it was a bit hotter, in fact the, the sun was out when we were here, it was gorgeous weather um, and he, he had it near the surface just by stalking. He'd done a 24 hour and hadn't had anything in the night and kind of thought that if the fish aren't coming to me I'm going to go to the fish which I think is a really good tactic especially on a hard lake like this. Definitely. So yeah, uh, hopefully we'll see you soon. Um, we'll make videos of each other doing a bit of stalking, you can see what we're doing, sort of how we're keeping our profiles low using a using our polaroids etc like we showed you in the other video um, so yeah look forward to seeing you soon nice one right that's it from us here at apex angling so we've been fishing beaver farm fishery cannot recommend this place enough we're on snipe lake one of two species but there's so many lakes here to cater for all types of variety of fishermen so there's match lakes carp lakes cat lakes you name it they've got it here so recommend this place so much we'll be back here uh, within a few weeks uh, and I, I think that this will be our fishery for the summer. Can't thank Andy and Chris the bailiffs enough, they've been very helpful and I think we owe our two fish to them so yeah thanks very much for that guys, much appreciated. Uh, thanks to the owner for letting us film here Tony, appreciate that and yeah like I said without their help we might not have had the catch so it really does pay that inside knowledge does help uh, and it did pay off for us.